So this is another wonderful day. Um, welcome to this uh, to this lesson. So uh, in uh, Vaikra, the book of Levit Leviticus, this is actually this week's parsha, uh, Achare Mot, chapter uh, eighteen, verse five. Uh, it reads, and let me uh, read this right from uh, from the Chumash. V'shamartem et chukotai v'et mishpatai. And you will um, observe my um, my laws and my um, and my practices. Asher yaser tam haadam, the ones that are uh, to be um, observed by a person. V'chay bahem, and you shall live in them. Ani Adonai, I am Adonai. And the critical um, word, which is also um, a little ambiguous, is what? And you shall live in them. What does it mean? Why? <laughs> Why do you, uh, you know, observe my, my laws and my ordinances, my instructions, my practices? That's pretty clear. But what is this little added layer, and you shall live in them. The, the sages obviously asked that question as well. Um, and uh, uh, the message is one, again, I'm going to offer the ending here uh, at the beginning. The message is one about aliveness. Let's see how that goes with uh, the help of the Slonimer Rebbe. The Slum, the, the Slum Rebbe, uh, uh, the late uh, Rabbi Shalom Noch Brzezowski of Jerusalem, the Ger Rebbe uh, in Netibot Shalom. Let's jump right in. The Shamatim et Chukotavit Mishpatai Asher Yasir Tam Adam Vechai Bahim, and you will uh, observe your practice, uh, my uh, instructions, and live in them. It could also be interpreted as live with them or live by them. Which is it? Chazal Darshu, the sages uh, have taught in the Talmud, Yoma Peihe, in, in um, the tractate Yoma, um, Yoma 80, 85, page 85, Bapasuk Velo Shiamud Bahem. They interpreted the, the meaning of uh, and live in them, meaning do not die in them. So the very simple interpretation of that is that if observing any mitzvah of the Torah, if observing any practice, if practicing what the Torah tells us to do would lead you to put your life in danger, life comes first. <laughs> Don't practice. Do not practice if, if, if this puts your life in danger. Defeats the purpose. <laughs> it goes, it, it almost goes without saying. Although, you know, there may be those who uh, may feel, you know, the sense of uh, um, righteous or virtuous martyrdom. You know, let me die, you know, in, in the name of fulfilling the mitzvot of the Torah. The Torah says no. <laughs> Don't do that. This is not what it's about. This is to enhance your not life, not for you to give your life up uh, for fulfilling a mitzvah. So from from here, mikasha pikoch nefesh dochet kima mitzvot. This is a, a halachic principle. It's a Jewish principle that uh, the um, the pikuach nefesh means the um, harm to um, you know to oneself. Um, is um, cancels out the need to uh, fulfill a practice. Um, I'll just say parenthetically that, that there are three exceptions. Um, this is uh, uh, murder, idolatry, and adultery. Uh, those three are an exception. One should rather be killed than uh, fulfilled. But that, that's, uh, that's a little bit of a tangent. I don't want to go there right now. Let's continue here with the Sonimer. The Unculus again v'chay bahem, and Unculus translated, and live in them, 
l'chaye alma, for eternal life. V'chen piresh Rashi. And so did Rashi. So both interpreters, Onkelos was an earlier, um, earlier uh, biblical interpreter, uh, the, the first translator of the Torah into uh, Aramaic, and then Rashi, who's a 11th century, 12th, 11th century um, great commentator. And uh, um, this means that when you fulfill a mitzvah, it, uh, it gives you life in the world to come. If you would say, well, uh, you know, you would live in them in this world, but obviously, you know, this world, it, it's, it, it comes to an end. That means that the merit of the mitzvah continues into uh, the world to come. That means that um, the, um, the, the, um, just like Uncle has said, this is, uh, this is eternal. The, 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 the merit of the mitzvah uh, stays with you forever. It's the, these commentaries are, uh, on its face, seems as if they are contradicting one another. Because the rabbis from the Talmud say that um, uh, the word live in them, chai bahem, is relating to the actual, um, how to fulfill the mitzvot, how to actually practice, and what are the, you could say, what are the parameters, what are the boundaries. But Rashi and Unkelus say, no, this has nothing to do with how you fulfill a mitzvah. It has to do with the reward that you receive from the mitzvah. So you get two different ideas. And so which is it? Um, Islamer says, it looks like they contradict. And he says, there's, there's another... Uh, there's another contradiction in here because uh, the sages in uh, the Ethics of the Father says, When you're practicing your Jewish practices, what the Torah is teaching, be like a servant who is uh, tending to the master with, with no expectation for reward. So, Solomon asks, how can the Torah then uh, promise a reward in the world to come? That doesn't make sense either. Okay, <laughs> so let's see where the Solomon goes with this, because, um, you know, you can already sense that he is uh, going to go to a level, to a new uh, idea that probably includes both and, and is more delicious than both. He says, no, no contradiction. Those two interpretations are both uh, words of the living God and they actually mean the same thing. Because live with them or in them really uh, uh, has two meanings that are interrelated. And this is the this is the the, the the key. The real meaning of live in them means when you are practicing Torah, when you're practicing spiritual practice. This is to expand it a little bit beyond Torah because I think these principles work for those who are practicing other practices and other traditions as well. Shikain man b'chayut, practice them with aliveness. Be alive in your practice. Shikol mitzvah sheyudim mekayem yikayma b'itlaavut uvechiyut kol aguf leivarim. Any practice that a person, that a Jew is practicing, he should do, or he should, she should do, with enthusiasm, with the liveness of all the body and all the parts of the body. Wow. 
This is like embody, be alive, be full, be there. <laughs> He's quoting from the Psalms here, as it says in the Psalms, all my bones will say who is like you, Adonai. So a, a person needs to invest all his being and all his aliveness into whichever practice he or she is, uh, is, is involved with, the chai bahem, and he should live in them, in the practice, the shaloya mut bahem, and not die in the practice, in the sense of, you know, be sort of dead to it, uh, be oblivious, be, go through the motions, um, you know, just sort of, just sort of recite to recite, or, or, or be, or do things out of habit, or, or out of, uh, um, yeah, out of habit. It reminds me of an amazing uh, uh, story uh, about the Baal Shem Tov. Uh, let, let, let me uh, uh, throw the story in here, and I want to also share a little bit more of it from, from the Slonimer. So uh, the Baal Shem Tov and his students were um, uh, arriving at a town and a synagogue that had invited, him, that invited the Baal Shem Tov to uh, come and speak and teach and uh, offer his um, his wisdom and healing and he uh, approaches the the gate the door to the synagogue and at the door he stops in his track and would not move forward his students are uh, standing behind him and waiting for him to actually enter but he's not for seconds minutes uh, until the students are saying, uh, Rebbe, what, what's the matter? Why are you blocking? What, why are you stopping there and blocking the door? And the Baal Shem Tov answers, there are too, too many, there's too much prayer in the synagogue. The students are a little <laughs> bewildered. Prayer, I, isn't that good? I mean, isn't it it's great that a synagogue should, a synagogue should be full of prayer? The Baal Shem Tov says, no, you don't understand. In this synagogue, no prayers are rising up to heaven. It's just too dense. I can't enter. <laughs> so are the people in that synagogue, are they the chai bahem? Are they praying with the kind of aliveness, with the kind of intentionality, with the kind of uh, full being of body, soul, uh, and intellect that uh, the Torah calls us to do? Or are they just praying by rote and the pray prayers are just getting heavier and heavier, you know, crowding up the space, as it were, of the synagogue? Great story. Okay, so the Slonimer here continues. He says, uh, just like the interpretation of of, uh, um, of of live in it, don't die in it, meaning be alive in it, don't be dead to it in your soul, that also applies to the idea of uh, the reward in the in the world to come, and he brings this beautiful story. So here it goes. Al der shemar Rav Kadosh Rav Shlomo Mikalim. It's the Karlin Rebbe. Zikrono Yair Aleinu. May his memory be uh, um, uh, illuminate us. She shama ki chrizu b'shamayim she Yehudi amikayemet a Torah ve mitzvot ve shomer Shabbat ve chol adikdukim that he has heard that it has been declared in the heavens that a Jew who uh, fulfills all the instructions of the Torah, all the mitzvot, and uh, observes Shabbat with all its uh, minutia and, and, and details, but does not have the experience of uh, pleasure and delight during Shabbat, Thus, when that person uh, is transition, transitions to the uh, to the upper realms, the upper world, he will receive his portion. His his uh, um, you know tradition believes that uh, there's a, a plot, there's a um, there's real estate, there's a spot for us in heaven when we arrive there. 
So the person will receive his uh, space uh, in the Garden of Eden for having uh, observed Shabbat. But he will be there, or she, he or she will be there as a bench by the, you know, by the pathway in the Garden of Eden. Because also there, that person is not going to feel anything. <laughs> so, you, you, will have, you will receive your spot in... in uh, in, in, in heaven, in, in, in Gan Eden, but you will be a bench. You're not going to be a mensch. You'll be a bench. You're not going to be a person. You're going to be like a piece of wood. If you do, if you fulfill, observe your Shabbat like a piece of wood, like you're dead, right? <laughs> like you're not feeling it, right? You're not enjoying it. You're not, you're not like, um, you're not imbuing and you're not absorbing the delight and the pleasure, the heavenly pleasure that, that is uh, potentially there and intended for us in the experience of the 25 hours of Shabbat. <laughs> it's not about the details only. It's about getting into the mood. And it, the, the, the meaning of this says a slonimer, is that the delight of the Garden of Eden, of Gan Eden, uh, the place where uh, the tzaddikim, the, the righteous one, uh, sit with their crowns on their heads, and they're, um, they're absorbing, they're enjoying the, um, uh, uh, the brightness of the shechina, that extends from the delight and pleasure and aliveness that a person has, a Jew has, when they are um, practicing the mitzvot, for instance, of Shabbat, in this world. It is through the practicing of delight in this world that we merit to have delight in the world to come. And there we will then be able to uh, enjoy the luminosity of the Shekhinah. So I think I want to uh, stop it there. Uh, uh, so the point here is well made, that there are, two, there are really two aspects. If we see, um, we, if you understand the Torah saying, V'chai bahem, as an instruction to be alive in, in our body, in our soul, in our intellect, in our spirit, um, and, and involve ourselves fully in what we're doing, especially in our spiritual practices, the practices that the Torah teaches us. So two things happen. One is we're fulfilling the Torah's instruction to be alive, right? Be, be alive, don't be dead. <laughs> don't be the walking dead in this life. This is not what God has put you here um, to do. And I want to also say this with, um, it's a great honoring of the places that are dead in us. Sometimes I'm depressed. It's what, let, let's just, to be fair, it's not easy to always be alive. Sometimes I will turn to my addiction. Sometimes I'll turn to my depression. Sometimes life will be crushing down on me with all kinds of circumstances that, that make it hard to uh, to really be in my full joy or in my full aliveness or even 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 to be alive in the sense of feel, feel, feeling my pain all the way. So I just want to acknowledge that, not to say that uh, the Rebbe, that the Slonimer uh, or Chazal or me or you, uh, you know, should uh, um, underestimate uh, the way that we are, are, are I don't want to say called to, uh, fall into those places where our aliveness is diminished. This is part of life's, you know, life's uh, uh, journey. But that said, 
we need to really remember uh, not to succumb because there is that call, that potential, and that necessity of us to heal and to mitigate and to handle and get better at that. I, you know, hopefully as, as time, as we mature and as we have experience, and Chacham Kebal Nisayon, there's uh, who is wise, the one who has experience with experience, we get better at, at um, God willing, um, handling the obstacles and opening ourselves more and more to the place where we are fully alive and fully fully in the delight and pleasure that um, life has to offer us and the Torah is directing us toward, right? And then, as we do that, we're really building skills that will serve us as we transition into into the world to come. What an amazing message. Thank you for um, sharing, sharing this, uh, these words of Torah, this uh, 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 teaching with me here this morning. It's really an honor and a privilege to spend this time with you. Um, I'm Rabbi Reuben Modik with uh, Makom Halev Community in Nyack, New York, and Hebrew Learning Circles. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts, comments, questions, anything. Please comment below um, if you're viewing us on Facebook and or and and or on um, on YouTube. Uh, comment, like. You know, we'd love uh, we'd love to uh, have your little thumbs up, and uh, also subscribe to our channel on on, on, um, on YouTube. Check us out on the web. It's makom-halev.org. If you're in the New York area, love to hear from you. Keep, uh, you know, send us a note, drop by. You can also find us on hebrewlearningcircles.org, our educational program, uh, bringing Jewish education and Jewish aliveness to children and adults at home, wherever you are at. With that, we're going to say goodbye for today. Wishing you an alive day. Shalom.